what I'm about to explain to you had a, a transformational effect on society <clears throat> at a very fundamental way. We changed our experience of life based on this profound application, well, a profound application of this particular effect. So I'm setting up a magnetic field right here, and my plan is to get a loop of wire with a current in it. There it is. So I'm making a current go up this wire, ch -ch -ch -ch, go around clockwise like that. And the cool thing is that this wire, as a result of the current and the magnetic field, well, there will be forces on sections of the wire. So let's investigate each of those sections in turn. In particular, first, let's figure out the force on this section right here. Well, current's going that direction, that way. And uh, <clears throat> the magnetic field's going the opposite direction, so if I try to find the force, it'll be like, ah, break my hand. No, so there's no force here. The force on this wire is zero, and the force on that wire is zero. Similarly, up top, the current is in the direction of the magnetic field, so I guess that means we've got electrons going that direction but there's no force because there's no uh, angle between them because the angle is zero, so you're taking the sine of zero and that's just nothing at all. But here, we've got current going up the wire and we also have the magnetic field that direction, so we can look at it in two ways. One, we'll look at it in terms of the electrons. So electrons are going down, and this is gonna be hard with your computer screen, but they're going this way and the magnetic field is that direction, so I'm gonna put my like that and then go like this and I see that my thumb is pointing into your screen and into my page right there. So there's a force that's inward over here, and I draw it like that. That's the direction of the magnetic force on this current carrying wire. And there are also electrons, let's continue the electrons, they're going this direction, and magnetic fields that way. If I do that, then you see that the force is outward in this case. So there we've got an inward force, and here we've got an outward force, and there's no force on the top or on the bottom, and there's some force on these guys, but it cancels out, and they're kind of right in the middle and right next to each other, and we try to make sure that there's only this force here and that force there. That force, wow, is there a net force? Is there a, uh, ooh, gosh, is it doing anything at all then? If I push that down and I pull that up at the same time, we're going to get a net torque. Okay, that's pretty exciting. Now, let's look at, excuse me, let's look at it again from the perspective of the current though. Now, we pretend that there are positive charges moving this way. So I'm gonna say positive charges that way, magnetic field, I'm using my right hand this time, magnetic field that direction, so I go like that, and I find that the force is still into the page, and if the magnetic field is to the right and the current is going down, then I go like this, and I find that the force is out of the page. So I don't care whether you say electrons are going this direction or protons are going that direction, you're gonna get the same direction for the force. So whether you're honest about it or you just gloss over the whole effect that Benjamin Franklin got the current wrong, it doesn't matter. You're ready to rock. There will be a net torque on this sucker and it will rotate about this axis. So I'm gonna put an axis right here that it can rotate about and we wanna figure out how much that torque is. So I have to define some quantities here. I'm going to define for you the width of my loop. That's a W and it'll be from there to there. And I'm also going to define the H. Now the H, this is the height of my loop H is the length of the wire that's feeling the force. So that's gonna go into my BIL equation. But we're using the H because it looks like a height right now. So I know an equation for torque, and the equation for torque is this. Torque is, well, it's gotta be force times distance times the sine of the angle between the force and the distance, right? And in this case, I'm going to find, well, guess what? We've already taken care of the sign, so that's fine right there. The force is BIL, right? Which is B times I, magnetic field strength, times current strength, and I guess more force, more torque rather, if the field's bigger, and more torque if the current's bigger, sure. And then I have to multiply this by H, <coughs> because H <coughs> is the, uh, H is the length of the wire that's feeling the force. 
it's not feeling a force until it turns, and there it's feeling a force, and it's not feeling a force after it turns up there. So I'm gonna then multiply that by the distance, what is this, D for a torque, oh shoot. That's distance away from the axis of rotation. So in that case, that's gonna be half of W. So I say W over two. This is, I'm gonna say this is the torque from the left side. Torque from the left side is that big right there, and torque from the right side, wait a second, is this positive or negative? Uh, it's gonna cause it to rotate um, that direction, like that. And so I don't have to worry about whether it's positive or negative, but look that torque from the right is exactly the same quantity. It's B times I times H times W over two, and then I can say that the torque on the system the torque on the system is just the current times the, times, well, it's gonna be current times, I'm sorry, I'm totally looking at this the wrong way. It's magnetic field times current times height times width. If you look at that and it says height times width, that's height times width, what is that for that loop? That is in fact the area. So it is then, we can see it as, B times I times the area of the loop. And it's usually written as I, um, wow, <laughs> I times A times B. And that's only if it's in a favorable orientation. I guess if I had it at some other orientation like, like this, if it's gradually going, <gasps> as it's gradually going to here, that will be, wait a second, it's gonna go like this. As it's getting to this orientation, right here, there's actually no torque at all. So let's think about this, big torque, no torque, and we'll do a top view so that you can visualize that. But we're going from big torque to no torque, so we have to, in fact, add a little bit of a sine of theta. Torque is I times A times B times the sine of the angle between, ooh, remember this area vector? The area vector points out. The area vector points out right in the middle. And so right now, I've got a big torque because the area vector is pointing straight up and the magnetic field is pointing directly that direction, so I've got a very big torque. And I want to say first that this, which we derived for a rectangle with height and width, generalizes for any area. We can, in fact, always use A. And that's, that's awesome. So then I want you to say, uh, should we do a top view first? No, let's continue this. If What if I had more loops? If I had a loop going this way, and then instead of leaving the loop, I just went another loop, uh, two loops, or three loops, or four loops. You can imagine that this force would get bigger and bigger and bigger, because it's effectively more and more current here, and more and more current there, as I'm adding more and more loops of my wire. So then I can get to this equation, torque is the number of loops times the current times the area, times the magnetic field, times the sine of the angle between them. I'm gonna write that equation on the next page and then say something cool about it, and then we'll do a top view. The torque of a current carrying loop, the torque that that current carrying loop feels when it's in a magnetic field is, dang it, N times I times A times magnetic field times the sine of theta. Oftentimes, you might want to separate the geometric the geometric contribution from the, uh, from the external contribution. So this part right here is sometimes called the magnetic moment. And because that came up a little bit in a book that I wrote, you might want to study the magnetic moment as a separate thing. It will help you as you continue your study of physics. Magnetic moment is N times I times A. So what I'm thinking is torque on Anything is the magnetic moment times the magnetic field and with an orientation correction right there. But the magnetic moment depends on how many loops you got, how much current you got going through them, and how big that loop is. So the bigger the loop, you get yourself a loop like this, that's not much torque. You get yourself a loop like that, that's a lot of torque. So we can change the amount of torque that we've got based on the, um, well, based on these three factors and the external magnetic field, which we presume might be out of your control, but maybe it's in your control too. All right, it's time for a top view. And in the top view, I get my magnetic field, and it's still gonna be, we're taking this picture right here, and I'm gonna draw a top view of it. So I've got a magnetic field pointing this direction, and initially, my orientation of my loop, what was I saying, it was gonna be a top view like this. My orientation of my loop is like, um, well, it's like, it's like this, it's standing up here because it's the top view. And I've got current going in my loop 
this way. Current is that way. And then here it's that way, and there it's that way. So this current right here, that current is going down into my page, and the current over here is going, oh gosh, up out of my page. And notice that the current on the top and the current on the bottom don't have any forces. So I get forces. I'm going to draw my forces. I'm going to draw my forces in primrose or something. I don't know. Yeah, primrose. All right. So I've got a velocity of positive charges out of the page and a magnetic field that direction. So the force here is that way. And the force here is that direction. That's the magnetic force on those current carrying wires. But as I move to this orientation, it will gradually spin to this orientation. I'm gonna say that it will be in this orientation in a little bit. And still, I've got current that's down and down and magnetic field, oh shoot. Magnetic field's still that direction because I just did a top view. And, um, well, let's figure out what's going on here. At this instant, I've got current that's going down. So I should note that. I'll have current into the page and current out of the page right here because I simply rotated the whole thing to that orientation because of the torque. And if the current's down into the page and the magnetic field's that way, then the force is simply out. And if this current is up and the magnetic field's that direction, then this force is also out. That's my magnetic force there and my magnetic force there. That's not a torque at all. But guess what? The cool thing is this will continue spinning because it's got inertia, it's got rotational inertia, it's gonna continue spinning. I'll, I'll set it up like this. I got current going that way and it's going to continue spinning. It'll have here a whole bunch of speed. And eventually it gets a torque the other direction. So it will go back this way and you can see that it will go what if you had a machine that could switch the direction of the current every time it makes it to this point right here? So instead of having a torque that brings it back, you have a torque that brings it to here and then switches the direction of the current like that, and then it'll go and faster, and then you switch the direction of the current again, and it goes and faster, and switch the direction of the current again, and faster. You've created a what? You figure it out. That is a game changer. Good luck.